how on earth does the board spin forward and stay under you? I mean, even if you want to kick out your board, your knee bends backward, not forward. Ow! So in that sense, you should not be able to generate enough energy to push the tail forward. So, there must be hidden science behind it. Let's break it down with why the trick. Please subscribe. Before talking about how to do it though, let me explain the physics first and show you why this trick is possible. In order to spin your board, you have to apply horizontal energy to the tail. In addition to the horizontal force, you also have to pop down the tail and let it hit the ground. Now, let's see what happens when you apply such a force to your board using a physics simulator. Here, we have a skateboard and a direction indicator that looks like a massive clock. And we are going to drop this white ball on the heel side pocket of the board. A green line indicates the ball's horizontal location, and a black line indicates its trajectory. Now, let's see how it goes. As you can see, the board seems to land at around 7 to 8 o'clock from its original location. I think you're already getting the idea, but let's break it down one more step further. As a result of popping down the tail diagonally downward, the heel side wheel of the rear truck becomes a pivot point. And since the front part of your board has a bigger mass, your board will swing out and land on your 7 o'clock. So, according to the physics, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to give your board a horizontal spin and vertical pop down. And number two, you also have to move your body to the heel side by the time your board completes a rotation. Now the question is, how to apply force forward when your knee doesn't bend that way. Simply put, having your weight on the heel side before popping allows you to both pop the tail forward and move your body to the heel side. Let's break it down a bit more in detail. Imagine, your body's center of mass is on the heel side, and you are trying to jump upward. Because of the difference between the center of mass and the point of action, which in this case your back foot. You launch your body to the heel side without having to jump backward intentionally. It's just like a spring. When you tilt a spring toward one direction and let it bounce against the ground, it bounces toward the direction it's leaning. Simultaneously, for the same reason, you'll push the tail forward again without having to do so intentionally. It is a product of your body weight on the heel side and popping the tail straight down. And this is when the importance of foot placement kicks in. Again, the heel side wheel of the rear truck becomes a pivot point. So, you can pop the tail more effectively by placing your back foot closer to it, which in this case is the heel side pocket. Also, with your back foot on the heel side, having your front foot on the toe side allows you to keep your body weight above your board. Finally, let's talk about how to practice it. I recommend doing it while rolling. This way, you can easily avoid letting it hit your shin. Move slowly and place your feet just like we discussed. Start shifting your weight on your 7 o'clock and pop the tail. At first, you don't have to try to land on your board. Just try spinning your board and see how it works. Practice step and know exactly how far back you should lean your body weight. Remember, you have to have your weight on your 7 o'clock. Try different weight distributions. You might want to move it toward your back foot or toward your heel side. Let's talk about one more important thing. Shoulders. In frontside pop shavits, try not to swing your shoulders unlike frontside 180s. In frontside 180s, you actually use the motion of your shoulders. But in frontside pop shavits, your board spins due to the difference between your body's center of mass and the point of action. 
so swinging your shoulders is not only not needed, but also might mess with your balance. Whenever they talk about the angled shoulders, they always say you should keep it parallel to your board, but I say against it. Although opening your shoulders while jumping up might give your board additional spin, having your shoulders at a certain angle the whole time does not. This is just like I said in the early tutorial. So have your shoulders in a way that you feel comfortable and don't change their angle while you jump up. With that said, once you feel comfortable spinning your board and know exactly where it will go, try landing it with both feet. Just so you know, this trick feels different at first in a sense that you have to shift your weight on the heel side. You may fall like a lot, especially if you are starting out. And you might also encounter problems such as your board flies away or sometimes it might flip. Let's talk about how to avoid those problems in the next videos. And that's all for this episode. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave your comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, it's been really hot recently, so please take care of yourselves. Until next time.